lots its existence it will lose its existence whatever assets and liability are x company having everything will become assets and liability of y company tax incentive has been provided for amalgamation of a company in three cases so you will get tax relaxation if you are a foreign company but conditions are there A warm welcome to one and all. This is your Adesh sir here, lecturing with the Ashram Facilitate College, the Temple of Excellence. Now we are discussing your topic called Corporate Tax Planning, Session One, Unit Six of your topic called Amalgamation and Demerger. Maybe you have shocked. I think why amalgamation in taxation? Normally amalgamation comes where? Yes, amalgamation comes under your accounting so accounting as well as the accounting standard 14 we call it as your amalgamation but why do we take amalgamation in the taxation we will not do any problems on amalgamation only the theory part you are supposed to learn what do you mean by amalgamation what do you mean by demerger and what are the incentive incentive in the sense what are the tax relaxation given for amalgamation all those things we will learn in today's session introduction part in simple like just i'll read out once then i'll explain you one by one in this in simple terms a merger or amalgamation merger or amalgamation is an arrangement whereby the assets of two or more company becomes vested in one company which may or may not be one of the original two companies the meaning is very simple like you have X company and you have Y. Just assume that this also jewelry shop, this one also jewelry shop. What we will do? This jewelry shop is where it is in the same area. This jewelry shop also in the same area. Like this is in Vijayanagar and this one also Vijayanagar. Third stage, third stage in a single road only. Normally, customers what they will do? Half of the customer will go here, half of the customer will go here, and rest of the customer will go to somewhere else because it is a small shop. This is also small shop. Few member they are interested in the big shops. Then the few people will go to some other shops. Now, what they decided? We will merge. We will amalgamate each other. We will start a new jewelry shop called. X Y Jewelry Shop. They amalgamated, they merged, and the two companies, two shops, merged into one shop. What is the name of the shop? X Y. Now what happened? The small jewelry shop has become big jewelry shop. Then what happens now? In this, ninety percent of the people will go to this shop only because the old customer will not leave. the new customer by looking at this big shop everybody rushing to this shop this is called amalgamation what are the reasons for merging one to improve their business and the second one if this person going loss this person also going loss they merge they invest capital they do some new inventions are this company is a big one there is a small one they are running under loss they are running under profit then this person will buy this anyhow if two companies merge together become one company we call it as amalgamation and demerger hope you got it yes while doing all this x company assume that there are lots of furnitures will be there the showcase will be there the chairs furniture ac everything will be there in x similarly in y also everything will be there so what happens if both mergers means all the furniture of x will become xy all the furniture of y will become xy assets and liability also will merge this is called merger or else we can call it as amalgamation now it is a legal process by which two or more companies are joined together to form a new entity or one or more companies are absorbed by another company and as consequence the amalgamating company loses its existence like big company there is a small company they both mergers it will become x only because there is a bigger one there is a smaller one now 
y will become part of x. Now, is there anywhere the name called y? No. The existence of y will cancel. The existence of y will be like, see, lots its existence. See, it will lose its existence. See, even though all the furnitures are there in this, all the libraries are there in this of Y company, but the name of the Y company will not be there. Hope you are clear. Yes, this is called your amalgamation as well as B major. Now, amalgamation means merger of either one or more companies with another company or merger of two or more companies to form a one company is such a manner that all the property, how they will merge First one, all the property library of amalgamating company becomes the property and library of amalgamated company. What is amalgamating amalgamated? X is their small company and Y is their big company. Y is taking X. All the assets, all the liabilities will become assets and library of Y company. First point. Shareholders holding minimum 75% of the value of the share in the amalgamating company, like whatever the shareholders of X company, everything will become shareholders of Y company. Next, all the property library of undertaking becomes the property library of resulting C. Whatever assets and library X company having, everything will become assets and library of Y company. Hope you are clear. Yes. Next, amalgamation. What is amalgamation like? All the property liabilities are transferred at book value, excluding increase in value due to over revaluation. Other than over revaluation, all the assets and liabilities are transferred in book value. Now you will understand what is book value. Book value in the sense balance sheet value. In the balance sheet, whatever value is mentioned, that do we, we call it as book value. Hope you are clear what is book value? Good. The resulting company issues shares to the shareholders of the merger company on a proportionate basis except where resulting company is the shareholders of the merged company. Sometimes on the percentage basis they will change. Now Shareholders holding minimum 75%, same thing is repeated. The transfer of undertaking is an going concern basis. So up to this is all about your amalgamation. So no need to remember all the points. Remember uh, minimum three to four points in this. So last point is the merger is in accordance with the conditions notified under section. So now we'll talk about the merger. So what do you mean by merger? Up to this, whatever we studied, it is amalgamation. And whatever we are studying now, that is called merger. Now, so next, tax incentive of amalgamation. Now, in your exam, you have to concentrate only on amalgamation. Now, what are the tax incentive? Tax incentive in the sense you are supposed to pay less tax or you are supposed to pay tax relaxation will be there. Now, so the tax incentive has been provided for amalgamation of a company in three cases. The amalgamating company, the shareholders of the amalgamating, the amalgamated company. There are three things are there. Amalgamating, shareholders of the amalgamating, as well as amalgamated company, whatever the tax relaxation or tax incentive these people will get. Clear? We are not doing what is amalgamation and all. We are doing in tax point of view, what are the relaxations they will get. Now, tax incentive to amalgamating company like exemption from capital gain tax. First one, there are need not to pay any capital gains, like if there is any capital gain, you are not like, there are 1 lakh worth rupees asset is there, they are selling at what? 1 lakh 20,000, how much more? 20,000 more, any sale of asset at profit, what you will get? Capital gain, but in case of amalgamation, amalgamating company need not to pay any capital gain tax. Second, tax concession to foreign company. If it is a foreign company, they will get concession. What are the concession? First one, 
25% of the shareholders of the amalgamated company or foreign company continue to remain shareholders of the amalgamated foreign company. So you will get tax relaxation if you are a foreign company, but conditions are there. These two are conditions. These two are conditions. What are those conditions like? At least 25% of the shareholders of amalgamated company foreign company continue to remain shareholders of the amalgamated foreign company hope you are clear yes such transfer does not attract tax on capital gain in the country in which the amalgamated company is incorporated this is the second sub point of your amalgamation next tax incentive to amalgamating company so third point so we done with one and two we are going for third point Exemption from tax liability on transfer of license to operating like telecommunication services. Any license is transferred, like there are two telecommunications, like one is ATEL or uh, we'll go with some XYZ. So XYZ telecommunication and one more is PQR telecommunication. They are merged. Whatever the license transfer to this person will be called as exempted. Then if the plant or machinery is transferred, if plant or machinery are transferred, there is also comes under exemption under your tax scheme. Hope you are clear. These are the exemptions you will get for transfer of your asset, transfer of your machinery, transfer of your license. These are the tax incentive. Now, tax incentive to shareholders of amalgamated company. What are the tax incentive like? Period of holding of shares of such amalgamated company, exemption from tax on exchange of shares. These are the tax exemptions they will get. Tax incentive to amalgamated company. What are the tax incentive like? This is for what? Amalgamated company. For amalgamated company, what are the incentives you will get? This is important for five marks in your examination. Now, capital expenditure on scientific research, exempted. Expenditure incurred to obtain license to operate telecommunication, exempted. Preliminary expenses, what is preliminary? Before commencement of business, whatever the huge investment you do, like registration, license fees, all comes under preliminary expenses. Those are exempted. Expenses for amalgamation. At the time of amalgamation, there are realization expenses will be there. Few kinds of expenses will come. That is exempted for your tax purpose. Expenses incurred under voluntary retirement scheme, VRS. Whatever VRS is there, that is exempted. Expenses on prospecting, etc. of certain minerals, that is also exempted then. Capital expenditure on family planning, exempted. Expenses on prospecting, etc. of petroleum and natural gas, that is also exempted. Any bad debts, actual cost of an asset, up to this, you will get all the exemption or tax incentive for amalgamated company. Remember all this 10 points. So I'll go back to all your previous slides so that you can take screenshots. So this is called introduction part. Your introduction part for amalgamation. Amalgamation as well as what is demerger. Tax incentive for amalgamation. There are three are there in that amalgamating company. There are four exemptions are there. One, two, three, four. These are the tax exemption for the incentive to shareholders of amalgamating company. These are the incentive to the amalgamated company. So this is all about your today's session. Hope with this we concluded your topic called your corporate tax planning. So please work out all these topics. This is only theory related. You don't have any practical problems in this. So in accountancy that is different in your taxation that is different. So please study well your corporate tax planning. Thank you.